Good morning, everyone. I want to talk about this week's Parashat, Parashat Hayeshev. And one of the major ideas that happens in this week's Parashat and in future Parashat is the idea of dreams. And the dreams that we see are harbingers of things to come in each instance. They're not just dreams or visions that people have, but they tell us a lot about the future. And what I want to focus on today are the dreams that Yosef has at the beginning of the parasha, which is at the beginning of his life, and what they mean, um, and what they thought that they meant at the time. So what are the dreams that Yosef has? Most of us remember them vaguely because we draw pictures of them when we're younger, and we assume they mean certain things. But let's look carefully at the words the Torah tells us about the dreams that Yosef had. So it says as follows. The first dream, he says, is Most people remember that the first dream involves grain and, and, and stalks and, uh, and gathering together. But what they don't realize often is that Yosef didn't only dream about that, but in fact, in the dream, the brothers were in the dream. All of his brothers were there. We're not sure which of his brothers, but it seems like all of them. All of his brothers are there, and the brothers are gathering the grain in the field. And as they're gathering the grain in the field, so Yosef seeing the brothers in the dream, now what happens? One grain, one, one uh, gathering of grain stands up, and the others bow down to the grain. Uh, interesting, the brothers don't bow down, and it's Yosef's stalk that's there. Um, one of the interesting things about this dream is that it's not something that Yosef should have been dreaming about because the brothers were not farmers, the brothers were shepherds. So why would the brothers be dealing with stalks of wheat? What's that all about? And then we have a second dream. And the second dream people tend to, 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 to miss as well. But you know, what's the second dream? It says, the sun and the moon. There's sun, moon, and 11 stars bowing down to him. Well, who's in this dream? Now, how many people are in this dream? Only one. Right? In the previous dream, there were at least 10 or 11 or maybe even 12. We're not really sure because we don't, we don't know if Binyamin was included in the first dream. It doesn't give us a number. It doesn't tell us which of the brothers were there. But in, in, in this dream, we have something interesting. We have the sun, the moon, and 11 stars, and they're bowing not to another star, but actually to Yosef. And although these dreams definitely have some commonality, there are definitely some differences. Um, so let's talk about them. Let's see what's happening with this dream. So first of all, what does everyone think the dream means? Everyone, and when I say everyone, I mean both Yosef and his brothers, and also his father, all think that the dream means that one day someone is going to bow down to Yosef. One day Yosef is going to rule over the rest of his brothers. And that is what they think the dream means, and that's why they don't get along so well, and maybe that's why Yosef is a little uppity. Uh, but I don't know if that's what the dream is really saying, for a few reasons. Number one, uh, Yosef is not bowed down to in the first dream. And number two, one of the things we know about dreams, both from these dreams and the dreams later with the butler and the baker, and also Pado's dreams when he's standing in the Nile, is that what's in the dream is symbolic of something else. It's not telling you what's going to happen. It's going to symbolize something else that's going to happen. So perhaps something else is, is meant to be understood here, and I think that is the case. What's interesting is, is that after these dreams happen, unlike the other dreams, the other dreams, the dreams of the butler and the baker, and the dreams of Paro, those dreams happen, and then the next day, the next week, they come to fruition. And this dream takes a long time. And in fact, this dream is a dashed dream. Because Yosef dreams this, and it doesn't come true. He gets thrown into a pit, and he's not around, and he's not a leader, and he's not in charge, and the brothers don't bow down to him. And, and, um, uh, uh, Yosef, uh, we see later, the Torah tells us that when the brothers come and they bow down to him, it says he remembers his dreams. So then at that point he should say, ah, you see my dreams come true? 
but he doesn't. It seems like he goes and he undertakes a plan of action once the dream happened. And the plan of action is to get everyone down to Egypt. So I'd like to say that something else is going on in these dreams. There's a different meaning, and that Yosef himself didn't understand the meaning of the dream until the brothers came down that day where he accuses them of being spies when they came for food. What are these two dreams? They don't mean two different things like Butler and Baker, because those are for two different people. And they don't mean that it's going to happen fast, which is what the double dream means to Paro. So why the two dreams? Well, the two dreams mean two different things. The grain is symbolic of the grain that Yosef is going to supply later. Later, Yosef is going to be the one that all the others depend on, all the others need. He's going to provide grain for the rest of his brothers, for the rest of his family. When that happens, we see something that's very interesting. It's not about Yosef's leadership in the sense of others are going to follow him. It's not about Yosef ruling over the others, but it's actually about Yosef caring about the others and the others depending upon him. If we understand that, that that's what the meaning of the dream was, not that you're going to be in charge, but that you're going to be the one that we're going to need and we're going to depend on, then we can understand the second dream as well. The sun, the moon, the stars, what do they represent? What does it mean, sun, moon, and stars? Well, we know sun, moon, and stars from elsewhere in the Torah, from Abraham. When Hashem wants to talk about a nation, a nation that's going to grow, a nation that's going to be His people, how does He describe them? He tells Abraham, go look out at the stars, see if you can count them. And so here, Yosef is having a different message. Because it's not just the 11 stars here. It's not just the brothers that are going to depend upon him. It's also the sun and the moon. And we know who the sun and the moon are. The sun and the moon are his father and his mother, who is God. But what's happening here is, not only will they depend upon Yosef for the physical sustenance that they're going to need to get through the seven bad years, but they're going to need Yosef to also sustain the nation. This, 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 the stars, the dream that Abraham Avinu had, um, of having a nation that's going to be God's people. And that too is going to be dependent upon Yosef. So perhaps all of this clicks into place for Yosef only later, and that's why he acts the way that he does when he realizes what happens. So this is an important lesson for us. Uh, how is it an important lesson for us? Because we have to understand what it means to be leaders. We have to understand what it means to have power. Unfortunately, too many people think power is about control. Power is about getting privileges. Power is about getting other people to do the things that we want. And I think that the brothers thought that when Yosef was young. I think that Yosef thought that when he was young. And I think that Yaakov thought that they all thought that when he was young. But what happens over the course of his life, and going through a lot of different travails, a lot of different issues that he has to deal with, Yosef grows tremendously as a person, and Yosef grows tremendously as a leader. And Yosef is able to learn the message of his dreams after going through all of this, and understand that being the leader doesn't mean I get the privilege, doesn't mean I get the access, doesn't mean I get the control. It means I get the people's problems, I get the people's needs, I get the people's dependence, and I have to take care of them. So for us, we have to understand we are going to be powerful in lots of ways in our lives. We're highly educated, God willing, we'll be successful, we'll be the heads of families, maybe we'll be the heads of communities, maybe more. And we have to understand the lesson that Yosef learned, and learned very well, because he really did take care of so, so many. That power is about taking care of others.